The Commanders picking number 11. Number 11 in the first round. Um, I see here that we have listed Trapp's quarterback as a possible need. I don't disagree with that. I mean, they have a guy with, I mean, they don't have a quarterback on the roster. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong button. What was that? What was, it? What was that? I'm going to play that again. What was that? Oh, it's a stupid Bengals theme song. Um, anyway. <laughs> I'll dunk on myself. Go Tar Heels. <laughs> Tar Heels need to not win this weekend. Um, or Friday night, I guess. Uh, all right, so what do you think? Need, I mean, realistically, they're not taking a quarterback at 11. We can say they need a quarterback all we want, right? Josh, face, I don't think, think so. Take, would they take Malik Willis and let him sit behind Carson Wentz? I mean, Gosh. I don't think it's out of the question whatsoever. Uh, okay. You know, I I think they're a very desperate team. I think that was very obvious based on the trade for Carson Wentz. Um, you know, based on the timing, it was a pretty poor decision. And I know Debo would probably argue with that. But um, I wouldn't have traded for Carson Wentz when they did, personally. Uh, they could have gotten a probably equal or better option later for less draft compensation and less money. Um and maybe I would have taken a shot on one of these quarterbacks, but you know, I might've just punted and taken a quarterback next year as well. So um, I think it's, I, I don't think it's, it's out of the question that they take a quarterback and Malik Willis, you know, you look at what Ron Rivera had in Carolina. I mean, Malik Willis, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. You can, uh, you can, yeah, hey, look, if you can put Malik Willis behind Carson Wentz and then you have, you know, two, uh, mobile quarterbacks who you know need to refine their arm strength, their arm, their accuracy, and their arm strength, and cut down on possible mistakes. Yeah, I mean, you got perfect, perfect combination. I think it actually would be like par for the course for the commanders, and I hope EK is not listening to this to like trade as much as this podcast like a year and a half ago. Don't worry about it. To to um trade as much as they did for Carson Wentz and still give him and and, and honor his huge contract that he got with the Colts. Um, and then pick a quarterback right in front of him and just they had the big press conference where he's wearing like the burgundy suit with the yellow shirt under it and then be like, oh, yeah, a month later, we're picking a quarterback. That to me would be would align with what we've seen happen with that organization. I think this has to be wide receiver um, for as much as I agree with Josh. I would not have hitched my wagon to Carson Wentz, um, whether it be Garrett Wilson or Chris Olave. It seems like the value fits here, like at pick number 11. We have offensive guard listed and linebacker listed as a team need. I don't really know if there's anyone available. Maybe Nicobe Dean, but they just picked Jamin Davis in last year's first round. So just pick a wide receiver here to finally give Terry McLaurin a running mate and just hope he can elevate Carson Wentz enough to, you know, maybe eight or nine wins, which similar to a few years ago in the NFC East, that could ultimately win this division. Here's my one pushback with the you've already got this sunk cost in a quarterback. Um, Carson Wentz point that, point that I've heard so often. Uh, and it's the same that applies to Carolina. But if you fix the quarterback position, no one's going to care if you gave up a second round pick, a third round pick. You know, just That's get right. it fixed. Uh, best, Arizona best, did best that. Example, with, best example is the Seattle Seahawks. Well, yeah. before, you know, they paid a ton of money to Matt Flynn and nobody flinched once. Yeah, they got Russell Wilson. Arizona. I mean, Josh Rosen to Kyler Murray. Like, you're yeah. going to take some heat in the moment, but if it works out, who cares? Yeah. If yeah. you be if you believe Malik Willis can be a special franchise altering prospect, and he's there at 11, you have to you have to take him. It, even if you traded a first round pick for Carson Wentz, the, the, the Rosen Kyler Murray example is even better than the example that I thought was the best. Um, the Madness continues. Don't miss a moment of the action on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. Download the March Madness live app to watch every game anywhere, anytime, live. Sweet 16 Elite 8 coming up. Make sure you are on that app so you can watch it anywhere, anytime. The Eagles. Josh. Oh, we didn't really do a day two prospect for the commanders. I don't, I don't care about the commanders. I'm over them. Um, see, But it does seem like 11 is kind of a... Like I, I really am over this team. Like I don't care about this team at all because it's a stupid name. Like I like WFT, and now it's, it's me makes, too. Um, the uh, but like it, it does it does feel like eleven is where it starts to get a little no man's landy. It does maybe right? maybe. I mean, if we do see two quarterbacks in the top ten, then you know suddenly the door is creaked open a little bit. But yeah, that's yeah, true. that's certainly a possibility. There could be a little bit of a drop off at that point. Um, day two prospects that we might consider Auburn's Roger McCreary, uh, the cornerback that Traps talked about earlier, uh, Penn State safety Jaquan Brisker. 
um, you know, really rangy players, made a lot of plays on the ball over the past couple of years. So um, two guys that could possibly be in the mix for Washington on day two. Okay. 